Okay, so we're going to be making a Dark Lord Yum. using the suggestions in Chapter 2 of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Cool, cool, cool. So the first thing that they suggest that you do is that you have a look at your party and what your party believes in and then take it from there. So for the sake of this, since we don't have a party that we're going to be focusing on, we had a game that we ran a couple of years ago for Tyrenia, which was called Carnival. And it was about seven siblings. I think one of them was actually a cousin. But yeah, there's this noble family during a revolution in fantasy. I can't believe it's not Venice. And at the end of the game, Claire, your character went off with one of the NPCs in a really like, there's totally going to be a sequel hook here down the line sort of a way. So in this magical hypothetical... Suddenly, the mists rise up around Kiara and Antonio. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Kiara? Uh, yeah, so Kiara was trained from fairly early on in her life to be the head of the family. Even though she was the third eldest, it was pretty clear that the eldest son wanted to go into definitely some sort of m- martial trade. Yeah. And it was pretty clear that the next eldest child, she had wizard talents so, yeah, she went and studied at the universities. And... Yeah. Whereas Kiara, the third eldest child, showed a more social and political skill. Yeah, you were always the sort of the dutiful one. Yeah, dutiful, but also, at least at the time, she thought herself not easily manipulated. Ha 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 ha. Because then over the course of the adventure, Carnival, she found out just how easily she could be manipulated in politics. To be fair, all of you got manipulated. We did all. Get yeah. During the course of that adventure, without explaining like everything that happened, but basically she started to sort of awaken to more of a religious way of life. And the, the villain presented themselves as being a saintly figure yeah. capable of doing miracles, and the revolution in the city focused around them. Yeah. With yeah. no one realizing that the whole thing was just a giant con by the true villains. Yeah. But as part of that, Kiara latched on to this old guy who was like the first the first miracle of the false saint was that she brought him back from the dead. And well this was okay, this was also sort of the player was fixated on Antonio. Because I was like, yeah, Antonio's gonna be the guy who saves everyone. <laughs> so the story for Antonio <laughs> Antonio was just meant to be an NPC who had some information that the party wanted. And so he was a dock worker. He had some gambling debts that he was struggling to pay off because he was out of work. Oh no, I've just remembered how our first meeting was. Yeah, and all the party had to do was find out where the secret prayer session with the saint was taking place. But instead of letting me, the charisma build, take the lead, everyone else decided, hey, let's go up to this guy and act really, really suspicious and put him really ill at ease and make him not want to talk to us. Yeah, it was... (laughs) It was not well handled. Um, so as a result, you completely fumbled it, as I yeah. believe. Yeah, we did, we did. And I don't think he told you anything. No. You just ran off screaming. Pretty much. The crazy people who were... Because my family started punching him, and then I had to be, like, psychically sending messages to everyone, like, stop, stop, I'm really sorry about my socially inept family, <laughs> but we're just trying to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, why are you running away? Oh, God, we've messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, the idea was just meant to be that you could just do a roll to deal with him, talk to him, or you could figure out their gambling problems and yep. cover his debts. Yeah. And so that would be it. it, and he never would have shown up again. But instead, you completely ballsed up talking to him. Yeah. And so when he returned, I decided, you know what? Since his plot didn't get resolved at all, he gets murdered by the criminals who he owed money to. And so they found his body floating in the uh, canal. And they then, the party, took the body and took it with them to go see the saint. And just showed up to this child who could do miracles and went, hey, we just found this dead guy in the canal. We met him at a bar that one time. And (laughs) what can you do about this, saint? 
and she brought him back to life. Yeah. And <laughs> throughout the rest of the campaign, there was a wide cast of NPCs, and the players could choose who they wanted to have join them on a mission, who they wanted to go and do something important off screen. And I always chose him. I just kept mashing the Antonio button. Yeah. And the idea was that whichever characters that they chose would develop their side plots. And Antonio became the sort of self-professed bodyguard of the saint. He became a true believer. He reformed his life. And then he kept on getting chosen systematically for mission after mission. And the dice rolls level up after well. level up. He, um, I remember the next time he showed up was a big battle where he had the special ability of dying to save someone. And you all just decided he's going to survive. Yeah, yeah. And I think he wound up killing one of the major bosses of that fight yeah yeah so in the end the final twist was santa maria was actually not what everyone thought she was actually a devil worshiper but antonio believed so hard by this point and had gone through so much that he wound up becoming the saint Mm. that Mm. he was looking for in this world briefly briefly he was briefly able to perform miracles and help defeat the red dragon overlord yeah so it was very cool kiara having seen all of this go down and realized how she was manipulated and seeing how this guy who she had sort of sponsored and supported had really had done like this public act of like heroism heroism but also like religious (laughs) heroism but yeah. also like putting himself in the spotlight and yeah. is probably going to be the next political target to get assassinated because you don't want someone like that yeah. just hanging oh, around uh, the revel- uh the resolution to the whole um uprising they killed the red dragon who was in charge but only by allying with the red dragon's daughter and putting her in charge as the next ruler yeah. she made a few minor concessions but ultimately the political reality was they couldn't just make democracy happen and yeah they just had to change one evil for a, a new less bad evil so with all of that happening chiara and antonio flee the city to go on a pilgrimage and we left it a bit vague yeah. because it was always our intention that we could pick this up with more plot hooks down the line. So yeah, in this hypothetical, we are now saying Kiara and Antonio wander into a bank of mist and when they uh, open their eyes, when the mist fades, they're now in Ravenloft. Yeah. So this is what we do. Step one, we ask our players which their favourites are of their personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Okay, let me have a look so, at Kiara. So, you have a look at Kiara, and meanwhile, I'll think about Antonio. Okay, Kiara. Speaks little unless necessary, pensive, no nonsense. Her ideal is temperance. She, uh, her bond is her mother's legacy of kindness and charity to the poor, and her flaw is pride. Why can't everyone just see it my way? The right way. You know it's pride. You know it's pride. <laughs> it was always pride. It, are all of those how you'd keep them, or is there anything no, you'd change? No, she's or... definitely developed since then. Yeah, that's those are those are the traits and the ideals and the bonds of a um, an untested girl. Mm. The flaw is still pride; it's just different. It's a different flavor. Yeah, because that's a very self-assured pride. Yeah, this time it's more like. I'll never allow myself to be fooled again sort of thing. It's, I, I, like, I think she thinks she can't be fooled again, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Is her new ideal cynicism? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Antonio, I feel like his flaw would actually be sloth. Oh, yeah. Not sloth and laziness but sloth in despair. Yeah, 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 absolutely, I guess. He had this amazing transcendent experience. Yeah, yeah, totally. He was the dragoon, man. He was actually the dragoon, killing dragons. And he'll never do that again. Yeah, yeah. You know, he'll never recapture that. No, he won't. And also, he, yeah, he killed the biggest, baddest dragon he was literally yeah. like a biblical figure. Yeah. yeah. He killed the biggest, baddest dragon in the world. 
who then immediately got replaced by his daughter. Yeah. yeah. So even with that sort of transcendent transcendental power and experience it was meaningless it was still kind of meaningless yeah 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 fully. so yeah i think there's a despair oh he, i think he'd yeah. probably honestly be dead if kiara hadn't suddenly turned up and be like right you're oh coming yeah with i me. think he totally would have been assassinated <laughs> either assassinated or just like drunk himself back into an early grave sort of thing i don't feel like he'd be able to do that but True. there'd always be that sort of sense of now that's it yeah i've I've done my thing yeah yeah oh kiara's totally playing on a sense of like i need to look after someone isn't she yeah i think so yeah 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 it's not like you have to come with me because you're gonna get killed it's you you have have, to come with me or i'll be killed or i'll be killed yeah yeah (laughs) okay so we've got your floor i can never be fooled again and his floor of i can never be great again and was i even great in the first place Mm -hmm. Fool me once, shame on me. Yeah. And what would you say is your other most important thing? And this could be one that you're going to change around rather than one of the ones that you've got there. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Bond? Yeah. Two of my siblings are dead and it's my fault. Oh. See, that's interesting because I just thought about what Antonio's bond is and it's very similar. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, if I hadn't kept everyone pressing in that jailbreak scene matilda would still be alive i mean the evil spellcasting succubus might have had some contribution sure but this is kiara here she definitely blames herself i I acted like we were all invincible and we weren't And my other sister is literally, like, gone forever. Her soul has been incinerated by dragon fire. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. In the end, I couldn't make the sacrifice play. My little sister did instead. Yeah. And I think Antonio's bond would be, I followed a saint who turned out to be a monster. (sighs) Yeah. He believed so hard in her. And I think that still stings him a bit. Yeah. Wow, so we've got... Oh, actually, yeah, two of my siblings are... No, not two of my siblings are dead. Three of my siblings are dead. Oh, the other is dead to you. Because the other one is married to the dragon now. He's as good as dead. Yeah. Like, I'm never going to be able to speak to him again in any sort of honest way. No. Because anything I say to him will be reported back to the dragon. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So now what we do is, for each of those, we look at... Either what happens if you take that to its extreme form, Mm. or what if we do the opposite of it. So, you can never be fooled again. What's the extreme version of that? Or what's the opposite of it? The opposite is I'll always be fooled again, which is, I don't think, very interesting. Okay, here's the image that... that, The extreme, I think, yeah. Here's the image that this is all evoking in my head, and this is just sort of like thinking about fool thinking about the word fool thinking about like a place where she's of high status and people are always sucking up to her but it's like yes manning to the point of gaslighting right yeah see to me the opposite of i can never be fooled again would be like i'm uh, constantly being fooled and i am the fool yeah Yeah. um the joker is me (laughs) um yeah, I'm constantly being fooled, gaslit, slash flattered. Mm, mm. Uh, or I will be the one doing the fooling from now on. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty messed up. <laughs> I can never be great again, and was I even great in the first place? The opposite to that is, like, greatness at all costs, at <sighs> any cost. Oh, jeez. So, yes, the opposite of I can never be great again and was I even great in the first place is... I will be great. Mm, I am great. Mm, mm, mm. I will do whatever it takes to be great. That's... I will be the greatest ever. Yeah, yeah. Or the sort of extreme version of it is just despair. Mm. Pointless, like true pointless despair. Nihilism. Mm. Your bond is m- my family is dead or dead to me and it's all my fault. So the opposite of that is family is everything. And the extreme version is it's not just my fault. I'd do it again. I would sacrifice my family. I will sacrifice anyone. And Antonio, I followed a saint who turned out to be a monster. So what would the the opposite of that be? Oh, God. 
Mm-hmm. It's the codependency thing. Find the saint in the monster. Love the monster into a saint. Oh, I see. It's yeah. the, like, I will always be in a bad relationship because I'm yeah. trying to find the saint in the monster. I see. Yes, that's the the even more extreme vision. Yeah, is, yeah, I will yeah. follow a monster in case they're a saint. Yeah, yeah. And the opposite of that is... Kill Everyone, yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. is yeah. a monster inside. <laughs> okay, so now we've got those eight points. We use these to think about who is... Like, what do we got there? What are our... So we've got... I'm con- We've got the gaslit one. I'm constantly being fooled. We've got... I, I am the one who will do the fooling. That feels more powerful. Greatness at any cost. That actually that feels quite powerful for you two. There is no point to anything. There is no point to any actions. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure about nihilism as mm. yeah. Family is everything to me, or family is nothing to me. I will follow a monster in case you're a saint, or everyone is a monster. I think that one is one that speaks to both of you. Everyone could be a monster. Anyone could be a monster. Trust no one. Trust nothing. Okay, so actually, I'm constantly being fooled kind of goes with that one of, like, everyone is being fooled. Yeah, yeah. It's because the two of you went through the same basic experiences, so you've got very similar... Yeah, but also, you know what this is also reminding me of? It's reminding me of Death of Stalin. Of, like, don't trust anyone around you. Yeah. Everyone is out for power. They will literally throw their family under the bus yeah. to get there. All right, so everyone is a monster. Greatness at any cost mm. seems to go to me to um, family is everything, but I will sacrifice. I think it's both of those. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. It's, it's kind of got to be both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we've got now... We've got a domain where the themes are everyone is lying, everyone is a monster, everyone is out to promote their own family. This is 100% but, the death of Stalin domain. <laughs> but they will do whatever it takes and they will totally turn on their family at the drop of a dime and not feel guilty about it. Imagine death of Stalin, but set in a sort of like fantasy Catholic church. Yeah, the everyone is a monster to me sounds quite like inquisitorial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, I'm thinking it's Inquisition Domain. Sweet. God, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's run with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and if it's the Inquisition Domain, then our villain has to be the Inquisitor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be the monster that the Inquisitor is chasing, it's going to be the Inquisitor themselves. So, the Grand Inquisitor. <laughs> Every Ah, so this is, the monsters are among us, they look like us. What shapeshifting monsters do we want to use as our thing here? Do we want to go doppelgangers? Yeah, probably doppelgangers is the one. Because also, like, dragons can do it. Um, demon ladies. Demon worshipping ladies. Actually, let's go. If we've got inquisitors, let's go demons. Oh, let's demons. go. Yeah. Demons, sure. Actually, witches is a stronger archetype for yeah, this sort of thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Witches, they're amongst us. They look like us. Yeah, yeah. In fact, let's make it the satanic panic. Devil yes. cults. Yes. Oh, that's perfect because we just came from a, a city where the final we a twist demon. was yeah. it was a demon all along. Yeah. It who went. The city is so sinful. I'm going to basically make it Sodom and Gomorrah itself into oblivion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. So yeah, we've got the Grand Inquisitor. We've got a land which is overrun by demon cults. This is something that both both of you would go ah right. And it fits with the whole, I'll never be fooled again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we know who the bad guys are yeah. now. We will yeah. help the Inquisitor oh, wipe God. out the oh, satanic planet card. no. Because our, our alignments are lawful good, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, we're so bad. This is going to go terribly. Yeah. <laughs> and the Grand Inquisitor will give you the tools you need. Oh, he will give you the help no. you need against the devil worshippers. I'm a bard, so I become the propagandist. Yep. Oh, no. He's a paladin! Paladins are the worst! Ah! Yep. Oh, no. It's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, God, we so become I think, the monsters. I think the family oh. is everything to me is... Tradition. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's the patriarchal, like, 
anything that deviates from the nuclear family is. I think it's also like and, yeah. the demonic thing is like, oh, it's just our little family thing that we do. Sure, 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 sure. Right? Like yeah, you've got, yeah. it runs in the family. You know, you've got these little sort of, I'm kind of imagining sort of hillbilly communities mm, with mm, their weird mm. traditions and the devil worship. Oh, and, God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the Inquisitors have to go and find who's bad and bring the flame to them. And oh, God, who's worse here? And who's really a demon? Like, uh, if people have fairy yeah. heritage, are they actually that or are they demons? And Yeah. 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 Mm. Cool. Damn. So... The next thing here, then, is let's choose what sort of horror we want to focus on in this domain. Obviously, I think there's a lot of scope in this domain. So I don't think it's a body horror domain, but I think that you could easily have body horror with, yeah, third nipples and what have you. (laughs) I don't think it's a cosmic horror domain. It does sound like dark fantasy. Mm, mm. Because we've got big, greebly demons. They're a little bit more overt than they were in Carnival, where they very much stayed in the shadows until right at the end, until it was almost too late. <laughs> Here, oh, I'm imagining you get big, nasty, Diablo-esque monsters rampaging around but you know, nighttime. But you know that the real enemy is the psychological horror. Folk horror. Yeah, yeah. Is a big one. Yeah. But the real, true enemy yeah. is the psychological horror of how we become the police state. How we handmaid's tale ourselves. <laughs> so I don't think it's psychological horror and, like, gaslighting and that sort of thing. No. I think it's the it's... gothic horror. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'd say it's... it's gothic horror, but with a mix of sort of, like, political horror of how we become yeah. the doing what we were ordered well, to do. Shall I uh, read the beginning of this? Go on. Gothic horror is about the terror within, yeah. not without. Yeah, yeah. It shatters the illusion of humanity in a poignant way by holding a mirror up to us and saying, look at what we truly are and look at what we pretend to be. Mm, mm, yeah. Under the mask of civility, there is depravity. Mm. Under that thin veneer of society, there is wickedness. And so I think what this is, is it is a dark fantasy world, which is folk horror versus gothic horror. Mm-hmm. And which side do you ally with? Yeah. Because the answer should be neither of them. They're awful. Oh my god. I love it. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Yeah. I think there's a really strong concept. So for each of these, by the way, it's got a whole section of um, monsters that are appropriate for that particular genre. Different potential villains different torments of the sorts of tortures that you might have. Well, okay, okay. So the Grand Inquisitor, right, he's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Like, a sort of Javert character, right? Of like, oh, he was the born. sin is inherent in me. I was born with it. Oh. Oh. Oh, shoot. Is he a tiefling? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's a tiefling. But he's got like a tail, so he hides it under his He throat. hides it because he knows that... But he also feels like if he does enough, then when mm. he prays... Mm. He'll hear God talk oh, back. He'll hear the saints talk back to no. her. Because that's the big thing that everyone gets told, right? Oh, if you're holy God. enough, if you're holy enough, oh, yes. you'll hear the voice of saints telling right. you what to do. And you're he's right. never, ever heard oh, it. Oh, God, you're right. Yeah, you're and right. he goes, I'm not hearing it because I'm inherently unclean. Yeah. I'm inherently a bad person because of where I came, because... I will sacrifice even my family. That yeah. was one of the points we had. Yeah. So the Grand Inquisitor is tortured by the fact that no matter what he does, he always feels like he is inherently filthy. I mean, surely his family is already dead by the time we get there. No. no? I, th- I think they're still out there. Oh, boy. I think he's caught some of them, but I think like I think they're still out right, there. Right, right. And so I think he's also cursed by that. That sort of, like, family is meant to be everything. Yeah. But. Oh, man, that's dark. (laughs) Family is meant to be everything, but I betrayed my family, and my family are the worst ones out there. And Maybe if I catch them and I wipe out my family, that will be be what I need. (laughs) Maybe then God will finally love me. 
And the most terrible thing about all of this is that you don't even need to put this in Raven Moth. No. This can just go straight into Tyrenia and it's... I know, works. right? It's, yeah. Yeah. I think part his curse, I think part of his curse would be... Well, he can't hear the voice of God. He can't hear the voice of God, which is just, just awful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> the curse is that he took that literally. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think he's got his sort of built-in nemesis. I think every time he catches his family, I think they're always going to get away. Oh, okay, sure. I think they're always his ne- Like how Strahd's got Tatiana. Mm, mm, mm. I think that his family is... Oh, it's not that they get away. He has to let them go because they will rat him out 100%. Oh, they would too, wouldn't yeah. they? So, yeah, he he has to hide the fact that he's let them escape Yeah. every single time because they always go... If I'm getting executed tomorrow, you're going down. You're so. going down with me, and he yeah. doesn't want to be on the oh no stakes. Oh no. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think they're like his Tatiana. Yeah, yeah. They're just they're always going to be his adversaries. Yeah. If he if he can engineer things so that like he can have one killed in the course of like taking custody of him, that's like ah yes, like you know one more for me. Yeah. But then like yeah. He's basically trying to prevent his secret getting out the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And that's that sort of self-serving mm, twist that mm, you need to turn exactly. someone into a Dark Lord. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a monster. He's one of the good ones. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. really put racism in for, like, his yeah. self-hating... I yeah, also get the people. feeling there's a whole bunch of Inquisitors. He's not the leader of the Inquisition. No, no. He's just, yeah. like, people look at him and they're like... You could be like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy, this guy is what we all yeah. want to be. I think there are other Inquisitors yeah, you could yeah, stop yeah. who would be like, I'm the bad Inquisitor. I pick on people. I go or, whoring every night. Like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, or I, I'm too fervent and I'll kill innocents. Mm. Whereas he's the one who gives people trials. Mm, mm. He's the one who is like, I want you to be found innocent. I cry every oh. time I burn someone. Oh, I hate him so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is great. Yeah, I love him. And he fits so well mm, with... Mm. He is us. That's the thing. He's the dark reflection of me and Antonio. Yeah, he is the dark reflection of you and of yeah. Antonio. Yeah. Your love for your family, your fear that you're being gaslit yep. your desire to change the world mm, and mm. become heroes no matter the cost yeah. your yeah. religious awakening mm, mm. oh well done yes. ravenloft guide you've you've done it again so yeah so then there's, there's a whole lot in here that you can then add in about where was he before the mists took him who were his family well we know who his family were they're devil worshippers he had probably had to go and milk black peter the goat every morning and how was his family oppressed or oppressive or both (laughs) both clearly both the inquisition isn't a new thing he didn't start the inquisition i think he might have ratted out his village though or something totally yeah Oh, and they make a big deal about how, you know, he was born into sin, but even he can be purified. Look, see, he's so pure. And he's like, but why aren't I pure? I'm not pure. Not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I think his family were persecuted, but I think they were also awful and did blood sacrifices and invoked to demons. And Actually, I'm kind of imagining, uh, like, the Waitleys from Dunwich Horror. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad I went with Javert and not Frollo. Yeah, yeah. no, see, that, to me, Javert the Inquisitor is like, it's like that meme, you know, the, the no, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's the self-hatred that drives Javert that makes him such a compelling character. I freaking love Javert. Yeah. He's such a good character. The fervent, yeah. driven by the self-hatred, yeah. I mean, to me, I think the big thing is Frollo is a hypocrite. Mm, mm. Javier's not a hypocrite. No, no. He is absolutely not a hypocrite. <laughs> yeah, he's a zealot, and yeah. that's the scary part. It's yeah. kind of scarier, but mm. it's also more sympathetic. Because mm, mm. he genuinely believes that what he is doing is the best, the right, the only way that you can act. Yeah, but at the same time, this guy is also a hypocrite, because he has to free his family to save his own secrets. So. Yeah. yeah, and he's a zealot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love him. Yeah, he's fine. Um, he's what was his childhood like? Well, yeah, he he was responsible for milking Black Peter. 
I'm gonna have who to did he care episode. about and who cared about him? Not his family, I think. See, I think it just being a sort of average childhood just makes it, like... Yeah, I feel like if if his parents are just awful, then he can go, well, I hate you, you're mm. gone. Whereas if his parents were like, we love you, now let's murder your childhood friend and use their yeah, uh, no. his blood to summon a demon. No. Well, you know, like, there's a bit more sort of light and shade there. I think there has to be some abusive things, but there also has to be some yeah. love. There is this sort of toxic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Re- toxic family relationship, clearly. Totally. Yeah. Who hurt him? Oh. Well, like... Life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the thing, like, people... The people... Like, most murders take place with fa- within families. Yeah. Because the people you love the most and the people you hate the most are... The same people. Yeah. It's yeah. it's that power... It's that pendulum of passion. Yeah. Um. It, it clearly, yeah. yeah. To me, he has to have been abused by his family. Yeah. And he has to have sincerely loved and been loved by his family yeah yeah because it just doesn't work otherwise exactly it's got to be both (laughs) whose respect or love did he crave well that's easy yeah exactly his family Mm. and now he craves the love of his new family Mm. and Mm. he's got it but he's always got that feeling of like i've joined a new cult but i can't summon the demons in this one yeah Yeah. Uh, like the demons aren't talking to me in this one like they used to talk to me in the other one. Oh, one. God, yeah, yeah. I heard the voice of devils, but I never heard the voice of angels. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, and, and so from there, then you develop the flaws and the bonds. I don't think we're actually going to fully flesh them out. The next important point they say is that your Dark Lord should be corrupt beyond redemption. I mean, there's nothing. Telling him that no one literally hears God isn't going to fix him. Because in, in Tyrenia, at least, well, no one hears God, but you do hear angels. Mm. You can hear angels. Because he can never fit in, can he? No. No. The thing is the that only way like, he, can fit he hates him... himself. Yeah. And I don't think anyone in Tyrenia has the class build of psychiatrist to help him. Yeah, like, really what he needs is to just leave this entire conflict and go to the beach and just, like, chill. He needs to go to therapy. He needs therapy. But therapy hasn't been invented. Yeah. Because this is Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> but yeah, they, they want him really, he should have done something, the thing that makes him into a Dark Lord, he should have done something intentional, unnecessary, successful, and harmful. Oh, he's like 100% like burnt down like a village of tieflings. Yeah. Like he's 100% committed a genocidal act already. Yeah. Ethnic cleansing, religious Rel- cleansing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is yeah. no way that he hasn't. It's actually, you know what? For him to have to be the Dark Lord, mm. he has to have intentionally hurt innocence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he Knowingly... knew that he, know- he knows deep down inside that the children are redeemable. Yeah. But because of the teachings of the I, I think he found his own village and I yeah. think his family might have escaped yeah and he was in a position to say you know who were the ones responsible my family and I think he deliberately said nah it's all of them mm-hmm. all of them are irredeemable and they all have to burn yeah and I think he basically identified everyone but the real suspects mm. and then had them horribly put to death yeah yeah because he hated where he came from, mm, but he mm. loved his family. Mm, mm. And and that's the act that made everyone go, wow, what a great inquisitor he is. Yeah, he yeah. just led us to all the ringleaders. Yeah. And he, he lied to his new family. He killed his old family. Man, <laughs> that's a, yeah, mm, that's an act mm. that's past redemption. Yeah. Yeah, irredeemable. Uh, he could atone before then, once they become a dark lord. Yeah, did your Dark Lord have an opportunity to redeem themselves and did they have a decision where they just doubled down on it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's a lot of further questions that you could ask from here. Oh, monstrous transformation. This is also another big... Uh, Oh, of course. There comes the body horror. He is the demon. He's turning more and more demonic. As he, oh, like, manifests... Yeah, yeah, he totally he is. He manifests the hor- the psychological horror as a body horror. So, yeah. like, stigmata, but, like, evil stigmata. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, he's got totally. some sort of horrible rash at two points on his forehead. Yeah. yeah. And, no, like, you're absolutely yeah. right. And um, then, like, yeah. it's 
scabs and like bloody wounds where he like has to saw off the horns that keep trying to grow through. I can even imagine definitely in um earlier Ravenloft this would have been the case for this guy. There would be nights where he's passes out and he wakes up in the morning. Why do I smell like sulfur and brimstone? And who was where did that demon come from that mm. just ate all of those people Jeez, yeah yeah and so he's constantly going no it's not me it's it's them yeah and if I can just yeah he jickles burn, and hides yeah. yeah he totally jickles and hides yeah man yeah Ugh. yeah Ugh. he's awful he is the monster he's hunting he yeah yeah, yeah which is it's kind of like a, making the metaphor literal mm, mm. Ooh. He's a monster. Oh yeah. In multiple levels. And extremely sympathetic. Yeah. But also utterly monstrous. And of course, like the first time you went into this domain, he would probably save your life. Yeah. He would probably you you'd come up friends. against demons and he would save you. And yeah, he would give you pointers. He would help you when you inevitably tried to sort of overthrow or reform the bad bits of the Inquisition. He were yeah. Everyone always says what a good guy Dr. Jekyll is. Yep. Do we want to wrap up by giving him or his domain a name? A suitable Italian name. So do I, yeah. Like, I don't know, Ignacio or something. <laughs> Ignacio is pretty good, yeah. actually. Let's go with that. Fra Ignacio. Well. That was fun. That was fun. That was just us throwing around ideas with the tools that are in Van Richten's Guide. So yeah, a really good source book, a really good toolbox, a really good how-to horror. And they say this is just the first of three. They made a big deal. One down, two to go. What are the next two going to be? Definitely Dragonlance. Planescape. Will it be... I sort of wonder if it will be, because really everything they need for Planescape sort of exists already. True. Will it be Planescape because it's so popular and weird and hasn't been redone properly since second edition? Will it be Dark Sun because it's so different to everything else in fifth edition? Will it be Spelljammer, which has actually been seeded already and also hasn't been done since second edition, and maybe we're ready for a slightly more campy take on D&D? Will it be Birthright so that they can put in the domain management and mass warfare rules that got left out of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Or will it be g g g Gamma World? g g g Gamma <laughs> It won't be Gamma World. It won't be Gamma World. Or will it? Oh, or will it be Council of Worms? Ah. Just so that we can all be dragons. Yes. If you're interested in being a dragon, keep an eye out for the Dragons of Tyrenia Kickstarter. When it arrives Ooh. one day, maybe... Who knows? I keep on working on it, but I feel like all I'm doing is just adding new material to the first draft rather than really starting the second one. In any case, that was Ravenloft. That was us. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing. (laughs) All those things. You did the plugs. You've been watching a lot of YouTube, haven't you? I have been watching a lot of YouTube. (laughs) You can can tell, can't you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's us signing out. Keep gaming.